Hey friends, if you are designing your website for the first time or you are designing client sites and you just wanna get better at Squarespace's Fluid Engine, I'm gonna show you tips and tricks that I use on every single client website that make them feel beautiful and consistent. Let's get into it. All right, before we begin, let's talk about Fluid Engine and what it is. First and foremost, when you're in your editor and you click G on your keyboard, you are gonna see a grid. This grid is Fluid Engine. There are some core things with this grid that you can use and leverage. I'm gonna show you how to leverage the space above and below, spaces on the side, how to use it and how not to use it, where I see a lot of mistakes, and how to think about sections as you build them out. So this grid right here, you click G on your keyboard, that's your first tip right there, you'll be able to see it. What's cool about it is whatever you design for a desktop, you can customize for mobile. So for example, if I want this image to go above, I can move it above on mobile and it does not change the desktop experience. You can see nothing changed on this experience. Now, the first thing I like to do before I get into any type of design work with Fluid Engine is that you wanna make sure you have a few things dialed before you start. The first one is go to styles and then down here in miscellaneous, go down to spacing and adjust this to what you like. Now. This is really important because this is gonna be the guiding force of how big your website is. What I recommend here is anywhere between, say, maybe at the very, very, very low end, a thousand pixels, all the way to like 1440. You don't necessarily need to go up higher. I'm gonna do 1440 pixels. You can't see a change because Basically, my screen is a little smaller than that, but you will see a change here. I do change this to three. I don't think I need four on both sides for the spacing. I think three is good. Two gets a little bit tight, and then one is definitely too, too close. So I'm gonna do three and keep it right there. That's the first thing. The second thing is I then want to play with the fonts and get my fonts dialed. So if I come in here and I go to sans serif and I select at one of these styles. This is really important because you see how much the font just changed in the size. We wanna get this set up before we start editing and trying to control Fluid Engine because then we will have a clearer sense of what we like, what we want, and how it's gonna look. So let's just say we wanna go with this. I'm gonna make one adjustment uh, to the heading here and change this to three, let's do 3.8 and 2.8. 6 and 1.2. Perfect. Okay, so this is a better feel now. This is a, just a quick design movement for me to show you that like as soon as you do that, all the fonts change and now the way you work with Fluid Engine is gonna change and I'll show you right now from what we were just looking at earlier. So those are the core things I consider. Obviously, if you're already doing site styles, I would say color as well, but because that's not necessarily important in terms of actual spacing, we're gonna leave that as is and then we're gonna hit save and then go back into the the page and start working with Fluid Engine. Now, once you have those things dialed, there's a few things you want to start working with. So the first thing is this. Here, this is paragraph one. I'm gonna change it to paragraph two. You can see here, it changed the spacing to one of the rows in Fluid Engine. If I do two, I can't make it smaller. I'd have to play with the actual font size to make it smaller. In this case, if I do paragraph two, it works out perfect. That's great. Same thing here, I would play with it. This feels nice. It feels like it ends in a nice spot. Sometimes you get like dead space where you can't get it closer. And this is gonna be one of the core tips with Fluid Engine. Never have blocks overlap unless they intentionally are supposed to overlap. So in this case, let's just say I couldn't drag this up higher because it blocks it kind of like this red line here. It doesn't let me go up higher. Let's just say I couldn't go up higher from right here, but I want the button to be closer. Well, the way I solve that is not by having them overlap. The reason is if I do that and I make the screen size smaller or something, what ends up happening is that happens where it overlaps, it looks funny, it doesn't really work. So unless the elements are supposed to overlap, you wanna do as much as you can to get Fluid Engine dialed so that the spacing is correct and that it just works well. Workarounds for this are you play with the font sizing and the spacing to get it to work a little bit better. You play with the button size a little bit to get it to maybe fill the space a little bit better. And that's just a little bit of back and forth with the site styles. So you just go into site styles up here in the top right corner, play with it a little bit. Shouldn't take too long. Don't overthink this. Generally what we have right now is actually great. So I would just drag this up, I drag this up. And then what I would do from here 
is I would take all these items and center it a little bit more. And then if I wanted to adjust the spacing, I could click on this block and position it down here if I want it to be closer or in the center. So that helps out a bit. And then here again, if I want to do the same thing, I could position this at the top or the bottom determined by what I want it to look like. And then from there, I could click out of it, click G and be like, yeah, I really like that. That feels nice. Now, one more pro tip here. Let's click on mobile. I showed you earlier that you could reorganize the items as you like. So I'm going to move this one back down. But let's say here, for example, you want to position this. Let's see if this goes up. Yep, it does. Let's just say this is bigger, but it's a little bit far away from the button and you don't like that. If you position this at the bottom, you could have this position at the bottom, for example, and then have this positioned, let's say into in the center or at the top, whatever you like, those could be different. So where you put it on a page and where you align it top, middle or bottom in the block is customizable for desktop and mobile. Now, if I change the text here and I, I make this like, hello, it's going to be the same for both. There's nothing I could do there in terms of customizing one or the other. Uh, so that is something to consider when you are designing in Fluid Engine. Now, let's talk about the actual section height and spacing of the section. Now, with Fluid Engine, a pro tip that I always consider is that I never want extra space below content to make the section bigger unless it falls into a specific category, which I'll walk you through right now. So what I always try to do is drag this up to the top so that it hits the very bottom item, whatever that might be. So in a case like this, let's take a look here. I'm gonna drag this up. I'm gonna drag this up. Let's say this is the, the final content. I'm gonna have these get as close as possible to each other. This one feels a little far away, so I'm just gonna center it like that. And then I'll bring this button up as well. Again, align it right below drag it up, but you see there's three extra rows here. I don't want those, so I'm gonna drag that up. If I want this section to be bigger, I'll show you how to do that. You want the elements to fill the space with Fluid Engine. You don't want just extra sections just to make it look good or like, let's say like, you don't wanna do that. That's not the goal. If you want it to take up more space, there's a way to do that that's more appropriate and helps your site be more consistent, which is if I want this to take up more real estate on the screen, I'll hit edit section. And then what I'll do from here is I'll work with the section height. So here there's S, M, and L, maybe small, medium, and large, and then you can customize it. So I'm going to click there, and then I'm going to change it to 50. Now what this number is, is basically the view height. So whatever the screen size, and you got to think about it, this is like responsive on any kind of screen size, whatever the screen size, it's going to take up in this case, 50% of it. If I change it to 100, which would just basically be L, if I click on that, you'll see here at the very top of the screen, it just fills the screen perfectly. So it's basically at 100. And again, I could just come in here and change that to 100. It's the same exact thing and you could customize it that way. Now what's valuable here is especially if you use these presets, you can use them consistently across your site so all the sections feel like they have the same amount of breathing room. One of the most amateur things is when one section has a lot of breathing room and another section doesn't, it feels inconsistent, feels like a different website. You wanna make it where all the sections feel consistent. And then another pro tip, is kind of like what I do if this was like the section header, let's just say this was the top of the page right here. What I would do is I do this as edit section. I would do this as 90. The reason I do 90 is because it starts to show you the section below, right below. This case is kind of hard to see, but let's say it's like this one. Let me fix all the spacing really quick just to show you. You get a full experience here. This is also a pro tip with Fluid Engine is like, I want this text to go out further than this text. So I just have two separate text blocks, even though they're basically text stack on top of each other. It allows me full control. I'll move this up. And then here for this, I'll do edit section. I will do 90 just like that. And so if that was the top of the page, you'd see a little bit of white below. So it kind of hints at the next section. Then from there, all other sections, majority would be probably M, or I would go to S for a few of them with the majority being M. I don't do large for all of them. It doesn't make sense, especially like a section like this. This would be crazy to have it full, full bleed in the middle of the page. At the bottom of the page, maybe. But those are things I consider. I never 
let this take up space unless, and I'll show you the reason right now, where that does make sense. Now, where that makes sense is if you have an element that you want to fill the section from top to bottom. So in this case here, you could see that there's no extra spacing at the top or the bottom here. So if I go to edit section, you can see fill screen is turned off. What happens is I'm allowing the image to do the work of filling the section. And that way, then I would have some extra space at the top or bottom for the content to breathe. So in, in terms of a section that you want to fill, this is where having this kind of feature is useful and nice because it allows you the ability to fill the section without necessarily having to do it with the spacing and then like code it or something like that. So let's take a look here. This is a similar example where I want this image to fill the section, but not necessarily fill the screen. And so in this case, I have the grid touch the top and bottom, and then the image can do that. So then it looks really nice here where it just bleeds. Let me go out of this. You can see the image just flows into the next section, feels really, really nice, really clean experience. And if you even want to take it to the next level, watch this. Let's do, let's add a shape. And what we're going to do is we are going to make the shape really narrow and then drag it to the end and then drag it all the way to the end and then i'm going to move it back okay so now i'll hit save and you'll see here it looks like the image overlaps into this next section which feels really really nice just by using the shape um, but it allows me to touch the top here it's a really cool experience where you could use some of these elements with fluid engine in a really fun way now i absolutely love fluid engine and if you want more tips and tricks i have tutorials in my fluid engine starter kit which you could purchase in the link down below that starter kit will give you access to like five to ten more videos just like this with more depth advanced examples tutorials for you to build really beautiful sections with ease even emulating some of the best websites out there so definitely check that out down below now my next tip is this this is probably the hardest one to navigate because you got to consider screen size across all screen sizes like from a phone all the way to a huge monitor. So there's a few things to consider. Now you could see here that my grid ends like right here. So there's like a lot of white space. If it was a wider screen, it would just keep going with like white space on the sides. So this grid size from this square right here all the way to the square at the very end, which you can't see right now, is 1440 pixels. It's what we changed at the beginning of the video. But if I take any element and I drag it to the end, well, what it does is it will basically attach to the end of the screen, which in some cases is nice. But if I like kind of zoom out, you could see here, like if you're on a really big screen, it gets really funny. Like it starts to look really, really weird quickly. This kind of works because I have it set to fit. And then I also have it set when you click on it to justify to the left. So it's basically saying like, you'll never get bigger than the height of this section, which works out really, really well. But if I did have it set to fill, let's do that. And maybe it looks generally good right here. If I keep going bigger and bigger, you see what it's starting to look like. It looks super funny because it's trying to attach to the side. So it has to stretch all the way out and it just keeps stretching out and just keeps stretching out. And it's trying to fill the image in the space. So you gotta just play with it and get the right spacing and sizing for it to work and look good. So I always get a little bit cautious if I am attaching something to the edge of the screen. Let me show you another example here that I really like, but is a little bit hard to play with. So let's take a look at sections like this. I love sections like this. So I just showed you the experience of like filling the top to bottom. So you have this image experience. Like, so you could do something like this where the images touch in the middle of the screen, which is awesome. But the challenge is this image has to fill the end. So you just gotta be mindful of what type of image you're gonna be using here for this type of section and what you're gonna build because the bigger you go, the more that image has to take space. And as you can see here, it kind of looks a little goofy. The image just goes all the way across. Now this image works because it's kind of just abstract, but if it was someone's face, it could start to cut off their face, it could start to look really weird quickly if you touch the edges. So you just wanna be mindful of that as 
as you use it. Now, if you have any questions, drop them down below. Again, check out the Fluid Engine Starter Kit on the link, the first link down below. And if you want more content like this, definitely subscribe because we have a ton of videos that we have published and new videos that we are publishing to help you get the most of your website and your digital experience with whatever marketing tools you are trying to leverage. With that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.